You guys ready? All right. It's 6.30. We're going to call the May 2nd Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Brooks. Here. Mike. Was Mike not going to be here? Okay. Brian. Present. Megan. Here. Melissa. Here. Rob. Here. We have a quorum. Item number three, approval of the agenda. Staff has a item to add at the end of the agenda. Okay. A recognition, a recognition for Tim. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, approval of minutes of the April 18th, 2024 regular meeting. Motion a second to approve. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, public comments. Anybody wishing to address the commission may do so now. Um, if you are on the agenda, we will get to you. Otherwise, no one up? No one? You don't get to talk. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. Item number six, public hearing for a zoning ordinance, chapter 1515-3. So about midway 2023, this board heard at least two or three variance requests for driveways in an R1 district on a residential lot. I think the most of the ones we heard were, com were corner lots, but there's a possibility for double frontage. So variance has a very high standard. Can you make feasible use of your lot? without a second driveway, generally the answer is yes, because you probably already are. So then we decided that maybe we should take a look at it. If something comes up a couple times, then maybe it's worth looking at. So we talked through it for a while, waiting on some final determinations on road classifications, but the text in the packet is what we came up with, and it's scheduled for public hearing. Okay. So, <coughs> essentially, we wrote this. So, does anybody have anything to add to it or discuss about it? Megan, you'll catch up sooner or later. It'll be fine. We need a motion to approve. Yes? Is it's a, a recommend recommendation to the city council. Yep. Motion and a second recommend zoning ordinance chapter 1515-3. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, public hearing zoning ordinance chapter 1583. So these next three are kind of lumped together, but they're different. They're different sections of the zoning code. The first is central business. The second is neighborhood business. And the third general business. In the municipal code, it says that video lottery permits are approved by conditional use. And there was not that language in the zoning ordinance. And so we decided to reconcile the two. And now we're adding video lottery as a conditional use in neighborhood business, central business, and general I believe you need three motions, yes? Correct. It's because the whole state law is a separate subject. Okay. So item number seven, zoning ordinance 1583. We need a motion. Make a motion and a recommend approval of zoning ordinance 1583. Second. Motion on a second. Now all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item number eight, zoning ordinance chapter 1593. Three. I would entertain a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, zoning ordinance chapter 1510-3. I would entertain a motion. Second, any other discussion? Hearing 
none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now on to discussion items. Number 10, townhomes, multifamily dwelling. At the last meeting, we had a discussion at the end about a proposed development project in town. Some of the limitation in the current zoning code is that there is no conditional use in the R3 district for single family attached greater than, I think the number is 36. And there is for multifamily, then the problem comes down to the definitions where single family attached is in the definition of single family attached, duplexes, twin homes, and townhouses, multifamily includes the phrase served by common corridors and entrance. What is proposed by that developer does not have the common corridors or entrance aspect. So we met with them last week, and I, I tried to put a pretty thorough memo, memo in here that includes definitions, kind of what we look at when we read a zoning ordinance, we give general credence to a definition, a definition's in there because it may or may not be more specific than a dictionary definition. And we try, if a word's in there, we try to give it the significance because it was put in there for a reason, just like if something is not in there, the presumption is that it, that is that way for a reason. So principal use determination, it goes through what's a single family, what's two family, multifamily, and how it came up with that. A couple of drafting assumptions that I made after listening to the last meeting, which was basically want to find a way to do it. They are functionally multifamily, so try to find a way to treat them that way. And so we have the proposed amendment starting on page 13 of the packet. What it mostly does is adds single family attached 36 or more as a conditional use in R3. And in the table, it So this, this is probably one of the bigger things to be discussed by this board. Multifamily dwellings are 2,000 square feet per unit required lot space. Multi, for single family attached 5 to 36, it is 3,000. Based on wanting to treat the single family attached like multifamily, we have the standard for 36 and above as being 2,000, whether you'd want that 2 or 3. We'd have to talk about it. For this particular development, developers' plans, the two number is probably more suitable for them, but not that one particular development makes the zoning ordinance. And for otherwise, the language we've included in the use in R3, all single family attached have the phrase in the applicable standards unless otherwise expressed. Or the footprint of the attached garage shall not exceed the footprint of the principal dwelling unit. Then there's kind of the caveat above that, that unless expressly stated here in the regulations for multifamily dwellings apply, and that would apply to signage and parking and everything else. Signage being the big one, just because in the signage section now, there is no allotment for a overall sign for the development. You couldn't have, this is a hypothetical sign saying like Aspen Ridge Townhomes. You could not have that currently under the sign regulations we have for that multifamily, you could have a whole separate sign for the development. So that's kind of where we're at, and I am open to how you all would like to proceed and talk through it. I think the last meeting, we sort of all agreed that what was presented to us should be allowed, right? So do you think this language would allow for that? Whether one you want one particular project to shape it, though, is kind of the feedback we're looking for. If, if nothing stands out as being a problem, that's, that's great. It's nice to hit it out of the park on the first time, but I know that sometimes it takes a little bit of talking through. I mean, this might be the first one in Brandon, but it's not like it's a foreign concept in other places. So does anybody else have anything they want to add? Go ahead. I started, when I was going through the agenda this morning, I got to this, and I ended up spending about three hours on this subject. And there's a, a much broader issue here uh, with the way our ordinance is written. Uh, and I think I'd rather address that before we address this specifically. Okay. Um, so a couple things. Um, we have, we got multiple definitions that are starting to get confusing. So if you go to page
page nine, where I think uh, Patrick kind of summarized all of our our dwelling definitions. We yep. have, um, for example, we have dwelling twin home, and we have dwelling two family parentheses duplex. They're basically the same thing. We have we're defining the same. Single family attached dwellings with a common wall on the same lot. But we're, so we're calling it two different things. So I spent time and I looked back through and I could not find where we even address the term twin home in the ordinance. Um, nowhere in our ordinance do we talk about in our definitions. talk about single family attached, okay? But in single family attached, it's a horizontal, side by side. So nowhere in our ordinance do we allow above below combinations, okay? So that's that's one item. Uh, another issue with the definitions is Dwellings attached and single family attached. Again, it's, for the most part, it's the same definition, but we're called, we're defining it. It's the same term, it's the same principle, but we're we're giving it two terminologies. We're calling it dwelling attached, and we're calling it dwelling single family attached. If you read the descriptions, yep. they're the same thing. They're defining the same. But we're giving it two different terms. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Patrick? Yep. Minor clarification points. So, my definition that I transcribed of dwelling twin home is misstated in the packet. At the last sentence on dwelling twin home in the ordinance is each dwelling unit is platted onto its own. So I copy and paste it and did the correct spelling. So that's the distinction between the two. But I do agree we should probably. We have a lot of work to do on definitions for okay. So I started to look at it on a, on on a, on a uh, district by district application. So I started with R1. I actually had to draw it out to, to keep track myself, but an R1, single family attached, okay, the ordinance allows, let me get all the wood here, um, as a conditional use, single family attached dwelling. standards includes townhomes and duplexes. Okay. So we have a definition for townhomes and we have a def definition for duplexes. The definition for townhomes is three or more. So we have townhomes applying to a permitted use of only up to two. Okay. Okay. So as can't speak for Paul, but most code officials, when they when they review a project, they look at is it permitted, yes or no. Okay, then they go, is it a conditional use, yes or no. If it doesn't apply to either one, it basically gets thrown out the door. Okay, so let's look at the case where we've got two units attached with a common party wall horizontally on two lots. Okay, so we got two lots. Two units, they're yep. attached wall to wall. Yep. Okay. When you when you go.
go through that process, is it a, is it a permitted use? No, it's not. Okay. Step two, is it a conditional use? Is it a single family attached dwelling up to two? Yes. Is it a townhome? No. Is it a duplex for our definition? No. We would thus not allow it. Make sense? No, hold on. Go but ahead. yet, but yet when you go to the black yard regulations, it is allowed. But we should never get that far into the code because it's not a condition permitted or a conditional use. So and I think that's where we're running into the same problem as you go through each of our three R districts is because we're, we're putting terminology, we're trying to define the type of building, whether it's a, whether it's multifamily work, whether it's an apartment, whether it's a twin home, whether it's a, a town home, whether it's a, a duplex. We're, we're trying to qualify it and give it a name, but there's so many different types of these, individual types may not fit into So you want to define them by well, no, use? I don't want to define them, by, but I think that's what's causing the problem. We're trying, we're trying to give it a name. Sure. So like I said, where you got two units yep. that are attached on separate parcels, yep. but they're not a permitted use and they're not a conditional use. That's not a duplex? Because no, Not for our definition of a duplex. Because both say a single lot. Brian's getting to it says this use includes townhomes and duplexes. It does not include twin, twin homes. homes. Okay. Well, we probably need to change that. So the other, but the other option is okay. Now let's look at two units, and I don't know how to define them. They're not attached above and below. So like a condo. They're not. They're not, they're not attached per our definition. Our definition of attached is side by side. Yep. So nowhere in our ordinance do we allow stacking of units, except. Probably not that common now, but there are a lot of cases of older buildings where there's up-down duplexes, right? Yeah, that yeah. used to you get some of these older houses. They convert. They want to convert them into a, a dwelling unit in the upper half. Provide separate entrance up to it. And when we say a shared wall, a shared wall can't be a floor. No, it says shared vertical wall. Okay. Hmm. I Probably. think we talked about this. So that was, so I, I started looking at our definitions and started to apply them to each of our three R districts. So to complicate things, um, I moved to the R2s, okay? And I took, okay, this is going to get really complicated. I looked at Ooh. multiple compli complexes. All right? I'm still trying to catch my breath from the last five minutes. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> all right. So one property. Eight units attached in lines. Got long, long building divided into eight, eight units, not one parcel. Okay. So when we go through the, through the it's not a permitted use because it exceeds four. So you go to the conditional use. Under conditional use. Next option, single family attached dwelling up to eight, individually platted lots surrounded by a commonly owned space. Yep. Yep. That should read. Those are the only two options. So, yep. that situation, that's not acceptable. Okay. Let's go to the next option. Take that same layout, a row of eight, up, eight dwelling units. Now there's a party wall between. Properties with a common party wall between them. Now let's look at that scenario. Not permitted use because it exceeds four. Is it a multifamily dwelling unit up to eight dwelling units? No, because they have individual entrances. Is it a single family attached? 
attached dwelling unit up to eight individual platted lots surrounded by common open space. So that would not be allowed. You know, so you start looking at all these different scenarios and there's very few, the only way you could have eight units on the same lot without, without the individually platting them would be if they share a common interest as a multifamily unit. So I think what What's happening is we're trying to we're trying to add definitions to these, but those definitions don't apply to all the circumstances. Do you have a solution? No. Okay. But I think we're running into this in, in the RS3 under this particular example. But um. it all, it's also happening in other in our other districts. And so I think rather than just try to address it in it's like, yeah. are, are we putting a Band-Aid on a broken leg? Right. So, yes. And I think the definitions allow for what I would consider, quote-unquote, conventional housing, as it's been done in the past, like a duplex or a multifamily, whatever. But people are starting to build more and more diversity in the types of housing, whether it be a townhome or stacked condos or whatever. So, yeah. The ordinance probably should account for that. Okay. So, so you know, do we do we get wrapped around the axle on multifamily that it has to be a single public interest? Uh, no. I mean, I get why it's there because that's what a traditional apartment would look like, but it's not necessarily the apartments that are currently being built. Especially if you want to you know, there's several in Sioux Falls that are, that are townhomes that are stacked together that are probably six or eight units long, but they're all individual entrances, garages attached. Okay. We did, we have a couple that I know for Greg, one down by the elementary school, uh, one north of the old library. Patrick, does all that make sense to you? Yep. Okay. So we had that conversation a couple months ago about housing and how we need to look at definitions and all that stuff shipping container homes and various yep. layouts and yep so this will be a big year on discussing housing definitions so I don't know I think we should Welcome hash to the this out bar. tonight and solve it and stay here until we do keep keep <laughs> Tim here I think we should wait till Barb is here <laughs> I, have you're, a you're I have a question about stacked dwellings okay, if you have if you have two side by side then this has to be what a firewall Okay, so if they're this way, does the floor have to be a firewall or did Okay. So if you're just taking an old house and you say, Oh, I'm gonna it, well, it becomes problematic as Brian was mentioning yeah. taking an old house. Oh, I have a trying to retrofit it. Mm hmm Like I have a split foyer. I'm gonna make it into two call this two or four and a half to do something to the floor to make it right? Well, potentially. You know, if it's the same function, if it's the same risk, then you would, you know, separate it. I just wondered. If they the property line, you know, yeah. they, mm -hmm. So I, I, I think how we've kind of gotten around this in the past is, you know, instead of step one, is it a permitted use? No. Step two, is it a conditional use? No. What we've done is we've gone from step one is it, yeah, maybe it is conditional use, maybe not. We'll go down to the lot yard requirements and it's addressed there. But it, it bypasses that. That it's not technically allowed as a, as a conditional use. But we allow it to be, because and, and rightfully so, I think that's the intent. But I think just the way the ordinance is laid out, some of the definitions. Um, I would agree. Causes some confusion. I, I don't think anything's done maliciously or no, wrong, no. it's just everything where it is where it belongs just needs to have better definitions as to what it is. Yep. Yes. And it, it's, it's starting to come forward as, as we're starting uh. to see more different types of multifamily complexes. Not just apartments, not just duplexes. We're starting to see townhomes and twin homes and uh, old houses.
the language you do have in front of you, uh, starting on page 13 of the packet, however you want to proceed, we, we all agree there is a deficiency in the way it, it currently works, but we do have a project that would like to proceed with if we would allow them to. So without language, we can't. And I don't know if they would necessarily want to wait forever for us to come up with language. So we're kind of at a point where they want to get started and so what we want to do and what we have on the books is kind of holding them up. From staff's perspective, would this allow for that to happen? Yeah. Then is everybody okay with that until you can tackle all the rest of the changes? And you'll have to bring it to the next meeting for public hearing, is that correct? So it would probably be, we'd probably be looking at June. Okay. A formal draft of what starts on page 13 and that would with the whole 10 day rule and public publishing it in the paper there's no way you could probably get that done by whatever the second Thursday or the third Thursday is so it would be probably the first meeting in June then it would be recommended or not to the City Council and the City Council would have their public hearing a second reading in 20 days so we're probably already looking at And that, that pushes their timeline a little bit, but it would allow them to get us started. Who knows okay. what the winter's going to look like. We could have a nice winter, or we could have, who knows. Okay. I think that sounds great. Everybody all right with that? All right, next item, 11, building permits. Anybody have any questions? Nice work, Paul. <laughs> Great job. All right. What's this? Oh, look at what the? Um, I will tell you that typically things like this are for people who are like, you know, close to dead. And I, I'm, I hope not, but man, where did you come up with these? I Look at that your beard life. on that guy. Ooh, that's got to come back. Jeez. So, otherwise, what staff has for you is I've gone around and tried to collect a whole lot of signatures from everyone that works for the city and huh. the city council. And Megan was here a little late, so she'll slash a sign if she would like to. And I also pulled up the meeting minutes of what appears to be your first meeting back what? on February 1st, 2007. If you would like to review what you did your first time, and now you have your last time. Probably and nothing would be my it's guess. It's actually a page and a half. Oh, yeah. We did a lot, but I can't yeah. imagine I did much. So, yeah. We just wanted to thank you for all your service to the city. Huh. It's last time Tim wasn't on city council or PNZ, dinosaurs roamed the earth. So it's been quite the change, and he's seen us through it all, so it'll be different. Yeah. Jeez. No. Yeah. Huh? When I did it, it came out to be 16 years, three months, or something. There you go. My last council was surgery. I thought they did surgery on your wrists. Well, my last council surgery was freshman algebra in 1970. Thank you. Way older than me. 
I didn't. I chose to leave. They couldn't hold me anymore. Very nice. All right. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 7.01.